His father was a powerful Muslim leader of the Fulani people. He spoke at least five languages and led an army of 2,000 soldiers. And in 1788, Prince Abdul Rahman Ibrahim Asori became one of the 13 million Africans that would be enslaved and brought to the Americas. Ibrahim's captors sold him to an American, Colonel Thomas Foster in Natchez, Mississippi. His long hair, a sign of nobility in Fulani culture, was cut. Ibrahima escaped and survived for weeks in the unfamiliar territory. But with no way back to Africa, he returned to the plantation. He quickly became indispensable, and with his help, Foster's farm became one of the leading cotton producers in the region. In the years that followed, Ibrahima married an enslaved woman, Isabella, and started a family. John Fox, an Irish surgeon who decades earlier had been saved by Ibrahima after a shipwreck in Africa, attempted to buy his freedom, but Foster refused. Still, Ibrahima's story spread widely, and eventually, the Sultan of Morocco had taken an interest in the matter. Fearful of harming diplomatic relations with Morocco, U.S. Secretary of State Henry Clay arranged for his release. But Isabella and their children remained enslaved. Ibrahima wrote one of the first collections of verses in Arabic to be published in North America, selling them to huge crowds to raise money for his family's release. But he could only afford to free Isabella and was forced to leave his children behind. Just months after his return home to his beloved Africa, Ibrahima died from cholera. The American Colonization Society later reunited Isabella with two of her freed children and five grandchildren. Ibrahima's story serves as a powerful reminder of the millions who were captured, sold, and forced into bondage during the slave trade, and the countless unsung heroes who struggled for freedom and dignity. What makes Abdul Rahman Ibrahima Sori's story different from other enslaved people? <laughs>